cooking. This side of the sink is the pickup side where the chemicals get put into the sink mm -hmm. and where the sanitation cycle starts for every milking. And that's what you're seeing right now is that the sink is full of water and I add manually sanitizer to the wash system. And then we flip it to this and the pressure switch is already sensing that it's full and then it will, on a timer, turn on and sanitize the system. And then this side of the sink is the waste side. And this is where all the waste water or used detergent is dumped. Before it goes. This is the air injector, and this is like your brush. Suck the water. Going out the jetters into the milk cloth, out the milk cloth. water gets discharged once it hits the switch up back to the sink. So this line, this PVC line coming down and this electrical line in this junction box is all for that Bomatic pulsation control box. Down here we have three electronic stand in place pulsation, Bomatic pulsations. These are 24 volt and they all run on this manifold down the bottom of the milk stand. These are my backup ports for when I want to milk on a barrel or there's a goat that's just fresh in that's on colostrum, then I'll milk her into that bucket or if she's on antibiotics or something, then we can milk her aside. Um, there's a few of those ports because I have two buckets and when there's 11 goats on the stand, I need four sets of claws. I need two sets of claws, four total. Um, and that the vacuum pulsation line, but and it's here with a cap, so if anything like milk, like a sleeve rips and gets into the vacuum side of the line, I can clean it all out. Um, this is the milk receipt, this is the jetter line, actually this is the wash water in line for the jetter cups. And then these are the milk low line, milk high line. And then the milk high line and low line go to this um, six gallon glass receiving jar. And then the milk, once the milk hits those probes, the pump sends a signal to the pump to turn on, and then the pump pumps it up into that bulk tank through the filter system you just saw me assemble. There's a one-way check valve in here that's rubber with the flapper on it, so milk can't fall back down into your receiving jar every time the pump runs its cycle when it's full. That's important because then your pump will just always continually run. So when that valve breaks, your pump will just run forever. And when you go to turn the system off, all the milk falls on the ground. Ask me how I know. This is the sanitary trap. So if any milk, say your pressure switch, your level switch, flow level switch fails and milk goes up so far past where it would be picked up, it goes into the sanitary trap before it goes up into the vacuum. This is the main vacuum line. This, this is so you can see, reading on the gauge, we should be like 11 to 12 for goats. And then this is your emergency cutoff valve in case you notice this thing is filling up full of milk and not pumping. You can slam this valve down and this will shut all vacuum off to everything that's down here, not the pulsation. We'll keep the pulsation going but we'll turn off all the vacuum on the pipeline. And so the vacuum enters on two positions, it enters on the pulsation line and on the milk side. So it has two separate feeds off the vacuum pumps, which are upstairs. So the vacuum pumps are upstairs and the way you get upstairs in the barn is this ladder. <laughs> So this is upstairs of the barn. Um, these are the vacuum pumps. This is a newer Sure-Built pump um, with a giant exhaust on it. This is pump number two. 
Um, this is pump number one. This is a new pulse variable vein pump, which is a little bit different than that pump. Both of these pumps are six, four to six horsepower motors. They're big. Um, this one's got like an oil trap system that sends oil to the bearings. This one is an enclosed system. Supposedly this pump is better built than this pump, but I'm running this pump right now because it's easily rebuilt. That pump is once it breaks, it breaks, I guess. I don't know, but I'm using this pump for now. Um, it's set up on one central two inch PVC um, valve system. I can have this, as you can see, this valve is open for running this pump and then you could turn this valve off or vice versa as you're running the pumps. Um, this is the uh, vacuum controller that controls the vacuum to the, the whole system. So the system only gets as much vacuum as this is gonna lit it. And it's probably at like 15, I would say. Uh, and then this is the ballast. This like holds vacuum and, and is a regulated ballast tank off of that. So all the vacuum comes from this pump ballast here and then these two lines run down to the basement this one is for the milk and then this one is for the pulsation and then this is the water trap so any water that gets i haven't been up here for a few days so there's probably a little moisture in the system or if any wash water gets sucked up into that sanitary trap it will come up into here so this is kind of like a fail safe so that water doesn't go into your pumps and this is all from that valve I showed you, if it was in the wrong position, it will suck up a bunch of water. And that's probably what happened here in the last few weeks, and I just haven't been up here to empty it. And I'll go dump this out. I hope it's not another one of these. If it's another one of these, something's wrong. But I don't think it is. It is another one of these. No, yeah. No, that's perfect. That's usually what it is. Every few weeks, I come up here and pull that off. But if I don't put that valve in the right position, then it will suck up this much water in one time. And I definitely have done that in the last few weeks. <laughs> so after 45 minutes, after the sanitized cycle runs on the pipeline, I get it all set up for milking. So the system is all closed still. On so it's technically all sanitized inside there. So I take the jetters off the, off the teacups and then slide the jetters into the plate where they sit while I'm milking. And then I'll set the valves up in the proper position and hang them where they belong. Are all the filter parts that I use 
for dumping milk into the bulk tank. They all get sanitized too on every cycle. filter sock and put it over the spring like so, do a little twist and throw this gasket on there. This makes a seal and then you slide this in the pipe. There's a lot here in Maine. So then I just disconnect. This is the swing pipe. So this is the return to the sink. And then this falls down into the bulk tank. extended this wire. This is set up for this tank, the safety switch. So this is in wash mode so that you can't dump wash water into your bulk tank, but you could pump milk into their sink. So basically is uh, that's just in milk mode now. It makes more sense when it's set up for this bulk tank, but when it's set up for that bulk tank, I have to do this. And now we're ready to milk? And now we're ready to milk. I, I can actually put chemicals in here right now for washing. Do you usually do that? Yes. Okay. So usually before milking, I'll set up the rinse and wash cycle on the pipeline. This side is acid, and I have to manually put it in these jars. It doesn't pick it up automatically out of your five gallon bucket like a lot of the newer pipeline systems. This is an older unit. Oh. This is an older unit, so I have to put in the measurement of each chemical. So this is going to be my soap, and this is my acid. And then I go over here, and I measure off 50 mils of acid. Put a little drip into it, and then 50 mils of soap. Screw them back on there. Acid on the right, soap on the left. And now the system is ready to milk. So I can flip the switch to milk and it will work. But if you're in wash cycle, this safety switch will prevent you from, wa from dumping milk into the sink. So. You're like, why isn't it working? It makes more sense when it's set up to this.
deal from a goat dairy that was closing, uh, retiring from the business probably what, like 10 years ago? And then it sat in the back of my woodshed until two years ago when we moved to this property. And it was always my dream to set it up and we never set it up because we were never at the right property. This is the right property and we built the space the way we wanted to and here it is. It's a New Pulse, a New Zealand system, or no, Madison, Wisconsin system. Um, it's fairly old. This is um, an older wash system. This is the system that it's uh, got a dial in there that sets all the timers and perimeters on hot water and cold water cycles to clean the pipeline. This is the return valve. This will either send water back to be cycled back into the pipeline or dumped out. And this, this is controlled by this motor. This is the this is the Balmatic electronic pulsation unit. This is what creates the pulse, pulsion for uh, milking the goats. That's everything is piggybacked inside this unit. So when it's flipped to wash, it washes. You flip it to milk, it milks, and that will turn on all the systems in sequence and how it's supposed to be set up. The pipeline is set up to either dump into the 50-gallon bulk tank. All I do is flip around a few of these pipes here and then my swing pipe will fall into the this bulk tank and then the safety switch is set up for this bulk tank. This is a 150 gallon bulk tank and with this some changing of some pipes real quick I can dump into this tank. And this is a new tank to us uh, last year, 2020. This tank was a part of the package deal that we bought uh, with the pipeline milking system. This bulk tank has been fully rebuilt got a brand new compressor, a brand new fan, brand new control rocks, 
The only thing that's from original. Poland. Yep, from Poland. This is a Poland uh, manufactured tank. This is a Greek manufactured tank. Um, being small, micro dairy, all the equipment is imported. In this country, oh. we're about cows, and cows will milk a bulk tank. This room, if I was milking um, 40 cows twice a day, the bulk tank would be the size of this room. So, so you're talking about electronic pulsation versus vacuum. Like so electronic pulsation is this box controls the pulsation rate. Um, how many pulses per second or whatever I think it is. Um, for and it's set different between cows and goats. Um, vacuum pulsation is what you see on top of an old milk bucket. I actually don't have a lid in here right now to show you. In but the, other video. the pulsation mechanism, which I'll show you uh, a little later in this video, um, you'll see that it's electronically moving, where bulk vacuum is actually making it happen in the old setup. This is more fail safe. It's always going to pulse at what you want it to pulse, no matter what vacuum is going to it. But it still needs vacuum. You're just electronically pulsing the vacuum instead of the vacuum creating the vacuum pulsation. So when you're finished milking, and after you evacuated your jar, and all the milk is out of the system, you go back and you put the inflators back into the jettas. And then lock the wash valves, which are these. Set them so it's wide open. This is, this is closed, and then this is open for milking a goat or washing the system. And then lock it into place with washing. And then go down the line and do all six, all six. to make it as high as I can so that any liquid left over falls out. And then this little duckbill drain lets vacuum clo vacuum closes it, and then if there's any water left over, it just naturally opens and drains out. So now that that's all set up, turn this valve to wash. Any residual milk that was left in the bottom of the jar comes out this valve, comes down, and this is the strip cup that I use. And then this, when I'm feeding goat kids, would just go to the goat kids. Seeing that I'm not feeding goat kids anymore, I dump this to the pigs. So the last thing I do before I turn on the wash system is I let all the milk that was in this gradual pitch and then get blown out, this drip. Because if I just come in here right after I blow the system out and I take this off, I get milk everywhere. So I just let it drip out while I set everything up that we just saw. And then I just take this off and I shouldn't get any drips. I'll leave that towel there in case that washer falls off. Ask me how I know. Put that in the sink. And swatch this over. Uh, and then button it up and it's ready for washing.
there's like hairs and some skin or whatever, I don't know, gross stuff. But that looks pretty good. It's pretty clean milk. If there was something wrong with the milk, there'd be like dots of blood, chunks, and little chunks of stuff, but the goats are doing good. No signs of anything. So now that I took apart the milk filter and I set the system to the black, it's, that's all I have to do now. So the system will fill in the sink full on rinse, which is just a lukewarm water for rinse. And when that's done, it will dump all that waste water on that side, take a few minutes to drain, and then it will go on to the blue, which is the soap and water will get injected in the soap jar and fill up the sink with 180 degree water. And that's, it gets really, really hot in here. Really steamy, really hot. It's already really hot in here because the bulk tank is cooling the milk really fast. It's already 41 degrees and it was like 80 in like two minutes ago. So after the soap cycle, it will dump a bunch of the water back to the suction side to really get that residue, milk residue out of the soap and then it will dump all the waste soap and water to the side, and then it will take a few minutes to let it all drain, and then it will go to the acid, which is the red, which is what the cycle ends at, ends on, is the acid wash. And it will, the timer will rotate all the way around to the clear, clear spot on the timer, and that sets it all up for me to come tomorrow morning at six, put my sanitizer in the sink, and just move it to the clear, and then we'll do sanitize cycle, and then I'm ready to milk. So you can see the cam timer. The blue is the soap, and then the red is the acid, and then the yellow is the cycle that sits in the acid, and then that clear spot is the sanitizer, and that's what the cycle will end on. And that's all been programmed to your local re milk regulations on how hot the water needs to be, how long cycles need to rinse and wash, that's all been set up in that box. So yeah, now the room is all set up, blowed out, clean, swept, and ready for tomorrow. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you would like to like this video and please subscribe. Um, look for more awesome videos about go farming coming your way soon. Peace.